I decided that maybe it'd be a good idea to do a refit, retrofit, turn a TP52 racing boat into a pilot house cruising boat. Come along and watch the story. If you're into building yachts or any other adventuring gear, subscribe, ring the bell and watch along as we build awesome toys. So I wanted a Cure 55, the full carbon fiber global cruising cat, but since we've taken it to market, everyone's decided they wanted one in a little bit more of a rush than me. So I was happy to wait, let all those guys get one. I promised my family that I was gonna be taking them cruising at some point over the next 12 months. The easiest thing I probably could have gone and done was just gone and bought a second hand cruising boat ready to go. That's not really the way I do things. So I started thinking, how can I get a super fast cruising boat that's going to be comfy yet I still get my sailing luxuries in. So a couple of months ago, I decided maybe a racing boat that I could reconvert into a cruising boat would be a great idea. A super fun project, an element of sustainability where we're recycling a boat that might have gone to the dumpster. I started looking around, trawling the internet, what old race boats are sitting around. Could I find anything that's out there ready for me to start my project? I thought a TP52 could be a pretty good project. There's always a handful of TP52 sitting around the world and there's definitely a handful of them sitting around in Australia at the moment. You know, they've got a pretty good form. They're a pr pretty slippery hull. I started looking around and seeing what TP52s were on the market in Australia and New Zealand, and there's definitely a couple. I called my mate Jason Roud, who runs Race Yacht Sales. He had a couple there, but I guess I already had an idea that I wanted to get a conventional mono hull. I'm obviously a, a, a catamaran guy at heart. I love the catamarans for how they work and you, you know, your livable area is upstairs and you're sort of consistently looking out windows. And that's one thing that the average cruising yacht does not have. So I thought if I'm gonna convert a, you know, a, a typical race yacht mono hull into a cruising boat, I wanna turn it into a pilot house cruiser. Now a pilot house cruiser, I guess, is getting all that sort of downstairs livable area, which is normally your galley, your lounges, bringing that probably about half a meter to 800 mil higher than it normally would be in a conventional yacht. And now all of a sudden, all of your living space is upstairs and you're looking out windows. I started looking around and I found a few TP52s that were available, you know, in that two to $300,000 price bracket knowing that I was pretty well going to take a chainsaw to them and chop the cockpit out. You know, I was a little bit hesitant, but probably willing to do it. I rung around all my buddies out of the, the sailing fraternity, which, you know, I've grown up in the, you know, sailing racing yacht since I was a little kid. Through my twenties and early thirties, spent some time racing on um, some maxis in Australia and, and sailing with all the Grand Prix guys. So, you know, I, I know all the guys in Australia to be able to call up and say, hey, you know of any race boats sitting around? If you're into adventuring, you're into manufacturing, and click that bell, subscribe. I spoke to my buddy Squark, CEO of North Sales Australia, and he was sort of like, yeah, mate, there's, you know, there's probably a few. He told me, you know, I think uh, Bill Barry Cotter and Speezy ended up getting a hold of a TP52 that had a bit of a fire on it. And I was like, okay, that sounds interesting. He said, I think the fire was in the cockpit. And I thought, well, that's the bit I'm gonna cut out of this boat. So I called up Speezy, he said, Speezy, I'd have heard you got this TP52 sitting in Bill's shed. What's the story? And he said, well, mate, yeah, we do. Um, you know, Bill Barry Cotter, the, the guy that started Riviera and Maritimo, he's got into sailing in the last few years and um, he's got himself a TP52 and a couple of other yachts. He was looking for a new high modulus carbon fiber mast to put in his other TP. This thing got burnt out. He bought this boat off the insurance company for a pretty good dollar, I believe. He's taken the mast out of it and a few of the other bits that end up costing owners a lot of money when they break some of the winches and pedestals and bits and pieces like that. And he really had this sitting in the corner of his awesome shed with not a lot to do for it. So I went down there, had a chat with Bill. He told me a pretty good number, which I was like, Mate, I'm not going to argue with you on that. He also offered that if I bought it, he would put it on his big race boat trailer because originally Bill Barry Cotter's in the, the powerboat racing scene. He's got some big cradles and all the equipment you could imagine of. And he put this boat, he said, oh, look, I'll, I'll deliver it up to the Sunshine Coast for you. Shook his hand, did the deal. 
So this particular TP-52 has a pretty good history. Don't quote me exactly word for word on this, but it goes something like this. It was built in about 2007 by Goitz Yard. She's a full carbon Nomex boat. So for those of you that don't know, the absolute Grand Prix or highest performance of, of composites is, is a Nomex honeycomb core with carbon skins. So she's a state-of-the-art build. Now, I, I, I don't know, but I, he was either the, the owner or the, the first owner or the builder, but Walt Disney was a guy that owned this boat, at, you know, in the very beginnings. This boat was actually in a Disney movie, like a two-hour movie, and the boat was called Silent Running or Silent Night or something or other. And there's a movie about these young kids that did the Transpac Yacht Race, which is from America to Hawaii. And there's a full movie about the whole story of that. So it went from being Walt Disney's boat to coming down to Australia about, I'm gonna guess 10 years ago. Famous business, Sydney businessman and and, and sailor, Sid, Sid Fisher, owned all of the, the ragamuffin boats. You know, a true, true legend of Australian sailing scene. He bought this boat, I guess at the same time he had his 90 footer and 100 footer and for whatever reason wanted a TP-52. This boat successfully got sailed by him, did a bunch of Hobarts, I believe came second in a Sydney to Hobart under, under his ownership. Uh, Sid passed away a few years ago and I believe his grandson kept sailing it for a little while until I guess the family put this boat on the market and it sold to a fellow down in Adelaide who I don't know a lot about, but they tell me he, he's pretty well a pirate. He looks like a pirate, loves pretending to be a pirate. He's called this boat Pirate um, and it's been sitting down in Adelaide and it had some, it had a fridge get put in the cockpit uh, and one night the fridge caught on fire and burnt the middle of the cockpit of this boat out so that's when bill barry cotter got a hold of it he's told he took the rig out of it and literally last month i, I shook his hand and did a deal with him and, and got it brought up here now i'm running a little bit late of uh up at my property i've got a hundred foot by 50 foot new big shed going in for my own personal projects it's running a little bit behind sh schedule luckily enough we've got this new 4,000 square meter facility you're getting finished off for um, one of my businesses, One Composites. We're a production manufacturer of fiberglass components and tooling. We've got one of these new facilities that's getting finished off at the moment, just under 4,000 square meters under roof. In about two months, this is going to be a hustle and bustle of a full production line of composites. We've got the factory next door that'll be full of robots doing all of our trimming and all of our kitting. You know, my, my passion is for, for composites and everything around composites. So this is an awesome new facility that's coming together. Now, thankfully, this, this place is running a little bit late. We're waiting for council approval. We're storing a few things in here at the moment. So I said, hey guys, I need to store my boat in the corner while we get this going. So hopefully over the next few weeks or month, I will get my shed up at home finished. I got that TP-52 that needs to go in there and a couple of other projects that are lingering around at the moment and that really for me is a, it's a dream come true i've been wanting to get a property that's big enough to live on as well as have a big factory where i can run my personal projects and i can uh, do all these things without annoying all my employees which i do all the time by having projects lingering around work which they sort of love but they sort of hate so where we're at right now is the boat's been up here for a couple of weeks. Had a couple of my digital guys over here, some guys that I'll introduce as we carry this project on. We've laser scanned, so if you if you saw in any of the video footage, there's little dots everywhere. We use those for the, the laser scanner to be able to pick up the boat. Um, we've also run a drone around the whole boat, so we've photogrammetried the whole boat. What we're trying to achieve is basically bringing the boat from its real life existence right now. We want to get it back into the computer, get it back into CAD so that we can do all of our modifications for turning this from what it is today, a bare boat, you know, bare bones race boat into a pilot house comfortable cruising boat. Obviously having a lot of tools at my fingertips for digital manufacturing. I've got the, the biggest 3D printer in the Southern Hemisphere, which is 22 meters long by five meters wide by 1.6 meters high. Probably be an element of stuff we'll use for that. Got a whole farm of 3D small desktop printers, anywhere from 300 to 300 or 300. Uh, I've also got up to, in desktop style, got one meter by one meter by one meter. After that, we've got robots for milling foam. We've got a Kuka High high accuracy robot with a full 360 rotation on the front of it. So basically a seven axis robot for milling foam, 
or any other types of sculpting. We've also got our business that makes vacuum infused flat panel. And there'll be an element of flat panel that we'll bring into this boat for all of the pilot house. Uh, we've got all our big CNC routers associated with that. So we've got three axis CNCs that are 15 meters long by three meters wide by about 300 mil high. And I guess with knowing all of those types of disciplines, um, which I, you know, called design for manufacture. We, we understand what our capacities are and we design. And the fun bit that I love doing is designing stuff to the capacity of the human and the machinery and knowing how we can get the fastest result. And that fastest result comes from the time you dream it up in your head to the time that you can get it into CAD and, and create the, the digital product that we're trying to make it to. And then we use our digital equipment to try and make molds or, you know, in situation structures out of all of that automation. And then obviously, finally, we get our tradespeople or our hands to bring that in and, and finish it all in situation. And so I guess right now, we're just in a phase where I just wanted to get the, the cockpit and the deck cut off this boat so that we can get more detail um, whilst the boat was in transport up here, it had a diesel tank sitting in the back and diesel went all through the inside, which to be honest has been an absolute disaster. I hate cleaning up diesel, uh, but you can see here, I've got all the degreases and washers and we've been washing it out. So our last bit of a job is here to pump all of this stuff out and we've got a pretty clean platform to get going on. And um, our number one task that we're gonna get going on is a one meter hull extension followed by a bulwark. So effectively, this is a pretty low profile race boat to make her a bit more ocean going and get her aesthetics a bit more right. We're adding about a 300 mil bulwark down each side. Um, I would call that a little bit moody. And then obviously we've got this big pilot house structure with a raised cabin top that's gonna sit in the middle and um, we'll build that pilot house as a completely separate module off to the side and we'll bring that and we'll pretty well just sink it into this current, you know, bunch of structures. You know, if you saw the pictures and, and, and you will of what the burnt out cockpit looked like, it, you know, it looked pretty bad from the outside. But to be honest, when you hopped inside the boat, you couldn't actually see anywhere that would say that the outside of the boat had a fire. All the internal laminates were good. I'm trying to be as kind to the structure as possible. Um, you will note there's, you know, these critical bulkheads which again haven't been damaged by the fire and i and i really don't want to touch um from a from a structural point of view i want to keep this project pretty swift and and and, and moving pretty quick i do have a goal that you know i'll probably get this project done in the next six to nine months i, I would love to have this boat ready for next winter to be able to head out into the pacific for a few months so I guess the final um, component to any sort of luxury cruising boat is the interior. Thankfully, I've got a business in the estate here called Zone RV. Those guys are absolute legends at making lightweight interiors. So once we've got all of the structure of what I just mentioned before in, we'll come in, we'll 3D scan the whole inside of this boat. We'll design a lightweight interior um, and we'll get this thing looking pretty cozy. Pretty well stripped the boat entirely of every wire and every component. So far I've bought a brand new 80 horsepower Yanmar, which is, these boats come out with a 54. What I've bought is the turbocharged version of the 54, which is 80 horsepower. So she have, should have a little bit more grunt for motoring and with a with a one meter hull extension, I'm, you know, I imagine this boat's going to be a very efficient, nice boat to motor. I bought all new Raymarine electronics. So she will have helms back here. She'll have chart plotters at each helm and she's got this really comfortable nav station inside. All the autopilot and chart plotters inside as well. Just finalizing my Harken deck gear package now. So these boats go from normally being sailed from, you know, 12 to 14 people. Uh, I will be sailing this by myself single-handedly, but with my family on board, basically finalizing a deck gear layout, which all the powered winches are back at the helm. All of the reefing sails up and down uh, are going to be able to be done uh, from push button control. The rig I'm depowering a little bit. Right now I've got three rig options. I've got two buddies that have offered me secondhand carbon rigs and booms, but I do also have an aluminium rig. I am turning this boat into a cutter, so it will have a self-tacking sort of quite a large large staysail. Then it will have a Genoa, which is at the normal tack point on, on the bow, um, which will be overlapping. And then it's going to have a furling Code Zero style um, sail from out at the bow, bow strip, which is, I'm also putting a flat winder 
which will make it a basically a full electric furling code zero. So I'm pretty happy with how this boat's going to be for a short-handed boat. The biggest problem that you have with a boat like this is is the the draft. Uh, they come out of the box at about a 3.3 or 3.4 meter draft. I am going to knock it back to 2.5 meters, which obviously is going to you know take a lot of the stability out of the boat. But I am also reducing the rig height. So no doubt in my mind that this boat will still perform extremely well off the breeze. Probably not awesome upwind, but you can't have it all. What other gear have I got coming? Very likely just put a brand new set of sails on it. You know, all of your other basics, all new hatches windows i'll put a massive uh off-grid system in it we got an awesome team around us for, for that so very likely this boat will have 24 kilowatts of lithium in it um to put that in perspective i live in a house and i have been living in a house off grid now for five years and we've been living off 10 kilowatts so i've got no concern that uh, with 24 kilowatts of lithium in this boat with a pretty big 48 volt um inverter uh she will have huge amounts of power i'll make it gasless from a safety perspective and to be honest just easy um so she'll be full induction in the in the galley. Put a reasonable size water maker on the boat, probably in the vicinity of 20 to 30 litres an hour. But apart from that, still a very simple boat. Yes, I've just probably rattled off a bunch of technology, but in my eyes, I'm keeping this boat pretty stripped. Um, the interior will be minimal, but yet comfortable. I am very surprised at how big the pilot house area is working out. I think the galley in its 4.4 meters long um so huge big galley masses of lounges this whole cockpit area gets really comfortable so on the back probably one of the last things i've got to figure out is whether i'm going to put davits hanging off the back or whether i'm just going to put a nice cradle system and have a lightweight tender that sits up onto the you know the, the reasonably large aft deck you know i like the benefit of that of just keeping the weight a little bit further forward looks nice and clean with no davits most of the vision is out I'm working with one of my buddies and the guys that works at Q Marine, Angelo, one of the yacht designers there. He's got an awesome style that I love. So he's been basically pulling this 3D model together on, on what she is going to look like. I probably couldn't be happier. You know, she's a very slick looking pilot house. So look, you know, the coming months are going to be interesting. We'll, 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 we'll slowly start pulling this thing together and, and getting some of these structures in. And I'm pretty excited about it. And I'm really excited to um, share the story with all of you about how we're going to pull this project together and uh, see if I can't get myself and uh, my family sailing out in the Pacific next winter. So watch along as probably over the next six to nine months, I'll try and pull this digital project together and try and get my family out sailing in the Pacific for next winter. We had a lot can go right. We had a lot can go wrong. If it all went smoothly, it probably wouldn't be any fun. So uh, come along and watch this journey as we turn this old girl, bring her a new life and uh, get her sailing for another 30 years. If you're into adventuring, you're into manufacturing and click that bell, subscribe, watch along as I take you on a journey through digital manufacturing where we're building marine transport and aviation projects where we can go further and wider out into this world exploring.